Well, hello there. My name's Stephen Ritchie. I'm an artist from Ashford in Kent, UK. I um, thought I'd take you through. This is film three of three of me making a mould steel dragon. I've made this particular dragon in such a way that it's got uh, a number of tails to it. Hello, love. Got a number of tails to it. It's got a jaw that has the ability to be able to move in case a customer wants it open. Uh, it's been raining continuously for about 10 days and all I got out of that was very wet and a couple of pretty pictures of rainbow. I also did a little, a few jobs at home and kind of modified one of my larger acrylic pictures. Turned a seascape into a sunset seascape. If that makes any sense to you. But what I have avoided is really showing you the type of tools. I thought I'd take you through uh, some of the tools I use for making this particular dragon. And I use a lot of vices. I've got about five vices and I can make that up to about eight with the vices I can just clamp. This is my, you know, just clamp where I need them. Uh, this is my main vice. Uh, it's got a quick release, about a four and a half inch jaw on it. I have a quite a larger one that came from an agricultural engineering in the day when they had no power. <laughs> And uh, on site, um, I have a swivel vice. So I put a secondary vice in as well, so I can work in the horizontal. That's very handy to have a vice that can swivel. And it's certainly very handy to be able to put another vice in there to work on the horizontal. I no doubt there's some specialist vices out there that I could purchase, but this works great for me. It really does. I'll just grab the tail end of it. Oh, excuse me. And um, I use a little tool, like a little tool maker's vice, which has got a quite accurate jaw. And then, so my main bench is basically covered in vices. I've really got any bench space. And then I use uh, my hand tools. I always have a cutter jaw, so I have at least four um, hand grinders and a little nibbling uh, machine as well. Now, the reason why I uh, tend to sort of double up or triple up on everything is just time really so i always have at least a couple of jewels i use these little lightweight dewarts they're quite cheap to purchase now i can buy more expensive things but i've had more expensive things stolen from me or um or i you know i don't i, I like this particular drill uh, drill like i say basically because it's nice and lightweight in the hand a new addition to my little toolkit is a uh, a new nibbling machine i haven't bought a nibbler for a long long time um, last one broke 15 years ago and I didn't replace it but I've replaced it now um, and as you know from the earlier film uh, I nibbled the wings out with that now I'm using four grinders uh, with this one's got a pad in it or maybe two of them have pads in them and two of them have grinding discs of various um, or slitting discs I use a lot of one mil slitting discs I sometimes use a 0.8 Except they're getting a bit pricey now. And uh, I've got a hand guillotine that's very, very handy. It's only a small one, but I'm only cutting quite thin materials. And a post drill that's got a very uh, adjustable bed on it, which can drop all the way to the floor or come right up. It's an ancient, ancient machine. But it's 240, it works uh, perfectly, and it drills the size of holes that I need. I don't need a huge, great dr drilling machine like in the old days. I'm quite happy to use this little one. And the dragon itself has come on in leaps and bounds. Like I say, I've made it in such a way that the main torso and tail is going to be in one when it's finished. Uh, Excuse me, but the wings come off. Now, I spent a little bit of time uh, uh, taking some films of the way I do these wings. I want the wings to locate in one particular place so they won't turn in the wind and rattle around too much. Uh, I shall pin them as well. And I make a sort of like a drippy effect that drips both sides beyond the joint. So it really does lock a, um, a wing into place, which... Um, I found in the past works very very well and by the time it's been galvanized which tightens up the joints a little bit and i've put a pin in it it isn't going to move uh, these wings are actually pinned together as well and on the site that i think uh, it'll go to it get pinned to a wall as well sorry about some of the camera work um 
So it's a case of dropping on some little bits of 6mm and overlapping in both directions so there isn't an obvious joint if you know what I mean. And um, doing my little bit of drippy effects with the weld which is gives a quite a nice um, texture to it and again a lot of these little spaces and stuff will be filled in with weld and if I don't fill it in the weld the galvanized will fill it in as well so really pleased with the progress that's going on there I've made and uh, filmed the dragon from a number of angles so I, what I did was I tacked the tail on to give you an idea of what it would look like now when I got it to this stage I uh, was starting my second uh, tail, the first tail you can see there, the curly one sitting there, and I was now working on the bottom jaw, and the opening pictures you can see where I, and how I was doing that, again lots of little panels that I've bashed out into shape first and then tacked in. You might see a little bit of light rust, it has been showering, I'm generally under the covers here, I like working outside because I like to keep my dust and, um, and mess outside but the rain was coming at, at me at all angles and I did get wet <laughs> and uh, so did my sculpture. I uh, wanted to speed up the uh, process on the straight tail so I made it up of I think four panels in the end and um, but I wanted to put a bit more wiggle in it as if it was sort of like um, under its own weight but it got a bit of a wave in it so that's what I did I, I sorted it out got it up to a certain stage which looked okay but I wanted to put more cuts in it so that's exactly what I did I cut it up a little bit more put more wiggle and shape the swivel vice came in very handy while I was making this dragon as well because I could mount it I could turn it around while I was working on it without keep taking it on and off the bench so keep that in mind when you're making stuff if you can get a vice that can swivel and then got on with the lower jaw, made sure that it, it, I can actually make it so it'll open if the customer wants an open jaw looking dragon. Um, but in this particular case, I, I've kept it sort of cla um, clamped shut. There is some more work to do on the head, but that's after I've sort of shown, well, at least a couple of customers what I'm up to. This is what it looked like with the drop tail, which I really quite liked before I put some more wiggle and wobble in it, if you like. Um, it looks really well balanced there, like the way it's sitting on that peg on that. Um, yeah, it's just I, I like I like it when they're sitting on something like that. If you can get the weight over, right over where it's mounted as well, it's already balanced. If you know what I mean, you don't have to do a lot more pinning. I will do. I shall pin the bottom of the tail. I shall pin the top of the wings as well. Um, this has got to survive gale force winds. Remember in in. Um, might be in the west country it's very very windy down there and the uk is only going to get windier with climate change i'm sure so yeah the straight the straight tail great success really good with that put some more slots in it made it wiggle a little bit more tidied up the end of it as well uh, got the old drippy effects going on the joints and then i attached the the curly one again just to see what it looked like Again, be great for fitting it. At the end of the tail, I can put a mount and everything on there as well. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So, the nights have been drawing in. It can be dark for many time from, well, if it's rainy and stuff, it's, it's pretty dull from 4 o'clock, up past 3, 4 o'clock. So, this isn't necessarily me working late. It's um, just might be a case of me, um, you know, any time after 5, really. It can be as dark as that so thanks very much for watching don't forget to subscribe that was how i make a dragon so it's caging things where i've got a little bit of weight a lot a lot of mig world overlapping and stuff um when i've had a discussion with the customer and i know exactly where that particular dragon's going to go i'll obviously bring you up to date and uh, show you what it's like i might even try and get the permission from the galvanizers to show you some film footage of me getting it galvanized which would be nice wouldn't it anyway thank you very much for watching thanks for tuning in um if you want to see more of the paintings and stuff i shall run another film up about the painting and things and uh, quite happy to do that for sure yeah, look after yourselves everybody, stay safe, be good, have a nice life.
miserável. Tá bom.